Hi everyone, now tying a few caddis at the moment, uh, one of my favourite caddis patterns is this one here, uh, top dropper caddis anyway as I call them. especially this is a CDC caddis uh, with a fluorescent ribbon there, I have filmed this one, uh, I do have a dark brown version, this one here, this again works really really well, uh, at the moment as well I'm tying some of the, these are much the same caddis, this is a tan and brown caddis. These are simple dressings, simple flies to tie, and uh, worth having in your cast. Now you can, this, these are no, there's no weight in these flies because I do fish them higher up, but you can easily add weight to these these flies and they'll sink, they'll sink nice. So see, there's different versions. Now I'm going to basically quickly tie one of them, just like you see. Now the hook choice is up to yourself. Uh, curved hook, anything like this, there uh, works. Uh, you probably the Chet Nymph is one of my favourite. I, I use it a lot. Uh, this is a standard wire. It's a standard shank, standard wire. You do get a heavier version if you want. Without even adding uh, weight to the fly, you can just change the hook to the heavier one, and that will get it down. So uh, it depends on where you want it in the cast and how you want it to fish the fly. But these are good top dropper caddis pooper. Thread I'm going to be using is the dark brown. This one here. I'm just going to. Start at the eye, come down to basically I'm in line with the point of the hook, which is there. That's the beginning of your thorax there, and it gives, gives you your measure. Now, I like a fluorescent rib. Now, this is the material I'm going to use for the rib. It's a neon, you can see orange, it's from uni. Nice and bright. Now, what I do is I actually wax it, I run it through the wax. It helps to give it grip and uh, keeps it. But to me it keeps it bright, so wind round the bend to this point and then we tie in some pheasant tail fibre, this is for the back and the thorax, this one, so I'm just going to pull off a few fibres, I mean up to 10 fibres or so, then I'm just going to line up the tips a wee bit better, trim them and tie these in here just at, at the back. And you want them on the top of the shank. Make sure they're secure. It's fine. Now this is where I, I use and these ones here. Uh, it's just basically CDC, this one. For the thorax and the body. This one's just a, a dubbin. This is uh, the Euro Nymph dubbin from Full Mill. I, quite, I really like it. Uh, the one I'm using is the Tan. So this one here is the tan UV, it's got a wee bit of UV through it, it's a natural fibre, very easy to dub, it's really good stuff. Good for thoraxes as much, and for lots of, I've even used it in some dry flies, so, so I'm going to lightly dub this on, slide it up. Now you can see I'm obviously up a wee bit for tying in the, the back, what I like to do is just then thin it out, work towards the back of the fly, and then build up because you want a reasonable body on the caddis and you just tighten as we go nice taper on it right up to the beginning of the thorax which is there the back just comes over the top now all I do is pull it over hold it tight here and pinch it tight and bring it down two or three turns that's fine and then first turns at the back, it protects the back of the, the pheasant tail. But you've really got to be tight. You want nice straight turns. And if the, the pheasant tail follows your thread, just use your finger to bring it back. Make sure you're nice and tight. You've got to be tight here. And right into the dubbing. Just as you come round. I'm trying to get it quite straight, so as we come round, tighten up. Even if you've got a turn into the, the thorax area, just do it, because what I like to do is make sure it's secure, remove the rib or the waist, just run down a wee bit, and then fold this part for your thorax cover, your pheasant tail, 
as I say, it's a simple dress in this detail, right up against your body. This is where you can uh, trim your, so you trim away the extra long fibres here at the back. You could leave these. Leave it like. There we are. Now you, you could add a wee bit of velcro just in the sides to bring out some of the flash, just tapping it. Watch your thread. I was just taking out the long guard hairs there at the back. Some you don't have to touch, you can see that's got a nice, nicer shape now. And then what we do is when you add some legs, now you, you could use the hackle fibre hen or whatever. Now I like to use, I'll I dye these, let me show you. These are just partridge feathers. They weren't really well marked, but enough, like a grey partridge, and I dye them, in this case this is just a, a brown or a cinnamon. Any of these sort of colours work. These are cinnamon, sorry. So what I'm going to do is take out, I'm going to get two flies out of this feather. So I just snip the centre of the stem, so I've got a right and a left. I'll do it again, I'll show you the tip here, Let's just take out the tip here, so it gives you a right and a left, and I'll use that, just tie it straight on, just from the top, this is the face or the front of the feather on top, and then hold it, you're looking round about the length of the body, come round with a couple of turns, before we do anything we can always move it around, this gives the impression of the, obviously legs, as much as the wing, the wing buds, or the, the wings bursting open. If you're happy with the position, then you can trim away the waist. So watch your thread. Come down. Now leave a head length from the eye. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually wind up from here. Now I've got one of the other dubbins from uh, Fully Mill. Again, it's the Euro Nymph version. This one here is the, if you see brown gold. And I'll show you the it's a, it's a blend of flash, it's a natural fibre again with the, the gold through it, so I've got some on my desk. Now what I could do is, uh, I've got some, these are the smaller CDC feathers I dyed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away the CDC and put it on my desk. And I'm going to lightly blend it into the, the dubbing. So I'll just show you. I'm going to take some of the dub and make sure you get a wee bit of gold there. Don't need much. There's the CDC fibres. So just sit them beside one another and then just mix them lightly through your fingers. Don't You don't need to spend too much time. That's fine, as long as you bring them together. Just offer it to the side of the thread and then lightly, obviously one way, keeping that, so that bunch of fibre in your, th in your finger and spin one way and that basically then it, when you're going one way it twists it together uh, you need the anchor point at your finger so that it tightens to that point and then what you do then is I like to wind up from the eye just tighten it up when we need to just form a nice thorax you need a decent thorax on the, on the caddis and now as you go up and then come back through so you get near the eye, I like to draw back the fibres. Anything going forward, draw it back, do a turn in front. Just make sure, I'm just going to make sure that those fibres are all back. There's always the odd one that you'll catch. At this point you can actually then just hold your, your legs and your pheasant tail out the way. I usually bring the fibre out, top, mainly from the top either side, so you get this nice deep kind of leggy light thorax and you can see what it's like bring it over, that's fine now you, you can add horns to it, I, I like to add horns I've got, I've got some bronze mallet fibres so bring out two just bring them 90 degrees from the stem you'll see the tips lining up tear them off I'm just going to separate them and then just use the thorax to hold them apart. So just draw these fibres back, come in, 
Here's the length I would like. Come round with a couple of turns. Just to see. That looks fine. And then I usually fold that back. Use my thread to fold the waist back and tucks it back. You can trim this away. Bring the thorax cover over. It's nice and tight. Maybe that. Trim away. Just nice and neat as you can. Now wax my thread to make sure there's plenty of grip. And then put finish. I'm going to go back here, I'm going to start it a little bit straighter. I'm forming the head at the same time when I'm, when I'm doing this. I'm placing the, those thread turns where I like to get a nice shape. Tighten up. Trim away. And there we are. You can bring out some of the the dubbing the underside as well, you can just bring it out, see the legs are sitting. There you go. Simple wee dressing, simple wee tie, a Try them in different colour combinations, but these are the main ones, like tan's a great colour. Olive, olive body is good, yellow. Uh, fiery brown is a good colour, got many time in the fiery brown. Just make sure the eye is clean, just use my dummy needle. So there we are, that's the uh, tan and brown caddis. I say it's in a simple fly, it's uh, just curling the ends of the, the horns just to bring them in. I mean they'll naturally do that when you start to fish. So there we are, nice easy fly to tie, uh, the rub certainly shows up but it's the brown spacing that you get in the caddis, that's what you're looking for, the, the, the chartreuse or the, sorry, the, the hot orange, fluorescent orange highlights that more than anything and that's what you're trying to do and uh, as you can see it makes it, certainly lifts the colour. So I hope you enjoyed that and again thanks for watching.